dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny Alaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekatos Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take a legata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline. The first access point that gives Satan legitimate access to the lives of men sadly including believers covenants please just write it number two ignorance ignorance number three disobedience these are the three biblical access points and the only access points that satan has if you ever find satan manipulating a life a destiny a region a family i don't care how long i don't care how great believe me when i tell you it is one or more or all of these access points number one covenants number two disobedience ignorance number three of the three the most effective for satan is covenants do you know why because covenants have a transgenerational implication covenants ignorance and disobedience are all interrelated but covenants seem to be powerful because it is on legal basis Let me touch on covenants. The idea of covenant was not invented by Satan. The idea of covenant was invented by God. It was God's own intelligence to manage the inconsistencies and to manage the emotional frailty of man. Listen carefully. God gave man a will and the fallen man by his design is frail with several emotional vacillations and if man is going to partner with god sustainably there has to be a way of binding man that is greater than his emotions covenants because covenant is a non-emotional activity that means you can't just decide to change it anything god wants to do with man that he wants to take seriously he will tie a covenant to it my covenant will i not break nor alter the thing that is gone forth from my lips you know believers play with the idea of covenants and you will see that everything god takes seriously marriage he took it seriously and he tied it to a covenant do you know why because he knows under normal circumstances the couple can run away by the next day so he put covenant a non-emotional binding so that it's not about what you feel or you don't feel there is an influence that is higher than your emotional vacillations salvation is a covenant whosoever believes him if not there are people who can be so bad they don't deserve to be saved however because it is a covenant whosoever calls upon the name of the lord it does not matter who that person is provided you confess with your heart let me tell you if you are given the keys for salvation there are people whose level of evil if you see them you will tell them don't near this altar however because it is a covenant whosoever believes in him even if you are saul even if you are paul whosoever the only personalities 
that salvation does not capture are fallen angels. Salvation is not for angels and non-human spirits. I'll be teaching you the rules of engagement. That is why Satan and demons cannot be forgiven. Mm -mm. Salvation is for men. Salvation is for men. The benefit of salvation extends to creation. But animals don't have to give their life to Jesus. They are already under the dominion of man. The same way when Eve ate, nothing happened till Adam ate. That is the same way. What animals and plants do does not matter, provided the man in control is still in touch with God. Are you seeing that now? Animals and seas and all of this only are harsh to man because man had willfully given his authority to Satan. I pray you're getting what I'm teaching you. Covenants are very powerful. Everything that God wants to do with you, if he wants to take you seriously, there will be covenants. Because by the frail nature of men, that's why you hear that there are relationships called covenant relationships, non-emotional. Is that true? When you get a job, watch this. It may not be called covenant, but there is something given to you called an employment letter. Is that true? It clearly spells the terms. You are going to be giving 500,000 every month. They calculate it for you per annum. You have 30 days, one month leave. You can spread it three or four times. They give you all of those things and then you sign. The signing is a declaration of your consent that if for any reason I violate these terms, is that true? The company has a right to punish me based on their modus operandi. And that if I comply with these terms, I have a right to take the company to court for defaulting. Covenants. Say covenants. That is the reason why when Satan came to our forefathers, he did not suggest. He called them and said, you want me to help you? Let us have an agreement. Now you see, an altar is simply a system of authorization. Again, we'll discuss that next week. When we talk about altars, an altar, because you will see that what we call the mercy seat in heaven, in fact, God himself sits, his throne is an altar. A system of authorization. Let us therefore come before the throne of grace that we may obtain from that throne. He literally sits on an altar. An altar is a system of authorization. The assignment of an altar is to insist that the terms of a covenant remain binding, even when those who initiated it are no more. An altar is the spiritual system that supervises compliance to covenants. There is no true covenant until there is an altar, and that altar is built and ratified with blood. So that even though our forefathers have long gone, even though those who brought all kinds of demonic things have long gone, but the altars that represent the witness are still there. So after 50 years, 100 years, the spirits have legitimate access to the people within that region. And every time you want to accuse them, they go back and make reference. The altar remains a witness. I am not an illegal occupant in this land. I was willfully invited and your forefathers and you were in the loins of your forefathers. That is the reason why the sacrament of the communion and the sacrament of baptisms, these are covenant type things too. How did you get into Christ? It was by the mystery of that covenant. Drink this. This is my blood of the new covenant. Do this as often as you can in remembrance of me. Are we together now? Watch this. When the angel of death was going to pass over Egypt, remember the condition for salvation was not your personal righteousness, whether you were a Jew or not. Just find a house. The house did not have emotions. Provided there is blood on the house, Whoever is in it, you are saved. But when you are in that house, even though you are saved, there will still be a difference. 
if you wanted to become a Jew there, you have to submit yourself to circumcision. However, as far as safety from the angel of death is concerned, the angel does not see men. He's looking for the blood. You know why? Because the angel of death was mandated to kill everybody. And like we say in theology, when he came to some homes, he found them already dead. Because the blood is a sign that the death that should happen has happened. So the angel of death will pass. As far as the angel of death is concerned, he killed everybody. It's only that when he came, some people, someone had helped him kill the ones in the house. So he moves to the house where there is no blood and creates blood there. Listen, that is the same way when a covenant has been ratified by blood, an authorization is given that everybody who comes from this region, this spirit, when you see them, have no fear. Through ancestry, through bloodline, or through their personal activities, they have brought themselves to that point. That is the reason why when you are dealing with issues of legal access, you do not cast it in Jesus' name. It is the blood that speaks. There are rules of engagement. Look at me. As powerful as God is, he did not cast sin out of man. You would think God would look at man and say, I am God, I am creator. Man, be free. No. When he gave Satan the authority, it was willful and it would take the blood. This is why a lot of believers just pray and say it is done and it is not done because they do not understand the power of the covenant that brought them that trouble. Go and read the history of many lands. You will hear that they buried human beings. They buried people alive. Do you know the power of blood and the power? Human beings were the zenith of God's creation. And you will not just carelessly say, I don't believe. I force my mind to think right. You are joking. It takes the blood and you see in the realm of the spirit blood is currency and from the physical world you know that there is dollars there's naira there's pounds there's whatever it is I don't know how much one dollar is to naira now don't say it <laughs> hallelujah but one thing we know is that it's not one naira to one dollar. Are we together? Because the blood of Jesus speaketh better things. Every blood speaks something. But with respect to what we want, the only blood that can speak to the degree. One million naira can pay for rent of a certain kind of house. But you can look at a certain house and you know that as wonderful as one million is it can't go beyond it you will need something else the blood of abel the blood of bulls the blood of goats they could do something in the realm of the spirit but when jesus came listen please don't mix next next week as i teach you the power of the blood the blood is powerful everybody's blood including your own you will be learning that the blood is one of the weaknesses on earth do you know what that means there are three things that have lived as long as the earth one of it is water this water you are drinking you are not the first person to drink it because it recycles you don't know who else has taken it before it got to you that's why the Bible says water is a witness. It has lived long on earth, recycling itself. And blood, nobody invents his own blood. It is past. That means the blood in everybody is typically older than that person, except you are denying biology. Is that true? I'm not a doctor, but let's be intelligent for God's sake. It took that blood to bring you. So the blood cannot be as the same age with you. There are three witnesses in heaven. The spirit, the word, and 
the father the spirit and the word and these three agree and on earth there are three witnesses the spirit the water and the blood many of us have found ourselves in situations today listen to me we're wrapping up you have prayed and prayed and prayed and fasted and as soon as you are done with the fasting the same thing you prayed about happens casually as if you were wasting your time in all that fasting you were praying to stop some spirit that is coming to molest you and just when you finish the last fast that sleep you just took a little siesta and that spirit comes again to rubbish your fasting because there are rules of engagement there are people who will not listen to me the fact that you are not listening to me is a sign that there is an attack already that is a symptom of an attack listen I will always tell you I'm not just speaking from scripture alone I'm speaking from experience there are things in your life that will never grow there are things in your life that will never thrive until you understand the rules of engagement for everybody seated here under the sound of my voice listen to me who is trusting God for some kind of liberty for yourself for your children or for your family please hear me there are only three access points as complicated as your life may seem don't let the devil confuse you it looks like there are one million doorways it's a lie there are only three access points one covenants two ignorance three disobedience that's it so you know what to close to be free and ye shall know the truth when you know the truth when both the deceived and the deceiver know the truth deception dies the strength of deception is that the deceiver knows the truth and that's what he uses as an advantage when the ignorance of the deceived cooperates with the knowledge of the deceiver deception happens the cure is not necessarily driving the deceiver alone but that the deceived must also come to the point of knowledge when you come to that point of knowledge now the deceiver does not have an advantage over you If a visitor comes to meet two of us or someone comes to meet you and your say your sibling and he gives 10 10,000 and he says give everybody if you didn't hear it or you didn't know that there is a share for you there the person can even give you 1,000 and you can kneel down he can even say go away this was for me is that true but if for any reason you find a way when the person wants to solve that problem he will come again and he will say let me repeat what I said I said this 10,000 is for everybody when you hear it that contention dies because immediately now you know the truth and based on the truth you know you can say my 10,000 no stories hand it over to me now in peace your boldness is based on the quality of the information and the persuasion that you have when you rebuke the devil and speak and then you go back and you are afraid and say ah did i talk too much oh god forgive me is because you are not sure of something that generates the power and the courage listen i have held many charms with my bare hands i have prayed for many people this is what i do i have seen many spirits I have met many demon spirits I can tell you the strength of Satan is in his power to deceive the strength of Satan is in the continual ignorance of the saints the strength of Satan is in the inaccurate construction of our spiritual understanding for John 1 5 says the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not when you go to your village 
you may, most likely may see shrines you most likely may see a lot of demonic things around just toying it with ignorance will cause you casualties but when light comes i don't know how true it is but i hear is the story of archbishop benson idahosa when i think someone dropped a dead chicken or something of that sort and they saw the chicken it was supposed to be a ritual for them to die and they carried the chicken and said we can't waste this chicken like this and they boiled it and ate it in peace and they went and slept and they woke up because you see before satan attacks he finds out what god told you and he finds out whether you know and believe what god told you the trouble is if you believe what God told you and you know how to make it happen and remain in your life now you have defeated him totally one last scripture and then we'll begin our prayer Isaiah 49 Isaiah 49 let's start from verse that should be 24 Isaiah 49 24 shall the prey be taken from the mighty it's a question or the lawful captive you know who a lawful captive is a lawful captive is one who was bought from a slave master because those days they used to sell human beings just like chickens and so if I'm a slave and my slave master comes and exchange money with someone and they transfer me, I am still a slave. I am a lawful captive. Number two, if a king leads a delegation to go for war and they conquer the people and kill the king, all the people within that land become slaves. Is that true? They are called lawful captives. For instance, Israel in Egypt. They were lawful captives. That's why they could whip them to build those pyramids and all those Egyptian buildings. But he's saying, is there a possibility that when the mighty has taken a prey or the lawful captive, can he be delivered? Let the Lord answer it by himself. But thus saith the Lord, even the captive of the mighty shall be taken away and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered for i will contend with him that contended with thee and i will save your children there is a cure to demonic covenants there is a cure to yokes and spells and hexes and all of these things please hear me there is a cure hmm. when Jesus Christ hung on that cross it was not just the body of a 33 year old man hanging his blood was touching the earth that old earth that is one of the witnesses when he drained his blood and according to the revelation of Paul to the church in he the Hebrew church when he went as a high priest and a lamb also he poured his blood once and for all and he returned back to the earth and said all hail he said all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me listen john said i wept for no man that means men are doomed i wept for no man is worthy to open the book and unlock the scroll and the elder said weep not weep not oh crying comes to an end weep not weep not for behold the lion of the tribe of judah the root of david 
has prevailed the word prevail means qualified to open the book and lose the seven seals verse 6 and I beheld and in the midst of the throne were four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though he had been slain having seven horns and seven eyes the lamb that was slain now unto the lamb upon the throne we raise us we raise us for you are god and god alone hallelujah Now unto the Lamb upon the throne We raise a sound We raise a sound For you are For you are God and God alone Hallelujah Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Listen, can I tell you this? The lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. Listen. Listen. There are people today who under normal circumstances you should not rise. I don't know what my forefathers did. I don't know what they did. In, in dating there is what we call AD and BC. Is that true? The middle man was Jesus Christ. I may not know what happened before he came, but the good news is that he came. He came. He came. Please listen to me. Your destiny depends on what you are hearing. Remember everything I taught you today. Satan is not looking for your money. He's not looking for your fruitfulness. He's not looking for your job. He's not looking for your health. He's looking for loyalty, transgenerational loyalty. And that the structure of his operation largely is deception. He manipulates strategies that fights the word of God. The principal raw material for his fashioning his attack against you is the word of God. It's amazing. That is not only God and believers that use the word of God. Satan uses it too. It is his principal raw material. Hear me. You hear of young men going to go and do money ritual. You will never see Satan following them. Yet he's the one moving them. Deception. Listen. And when they go and do the money ritual, you will see that there are physical evidences money comes so they'll go and do it again because they don't know what else satan will never tell you the complete story and he will never tell you the whole truth he will doctor the truth to present it in a way that provides an advantage for him when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into Satan has deceived pastors. Satan has deceived churches. For instance, the understanding and the theology that you should just concentrate on serving God in your spiritual life and don't worry whether you are doing well or not, whether your finances are doing well, it looks like a sincere message. But that is a destructive message. Many sincere people have received it and today they cannot pay the school fees of their children. And today they are in trouble and then for others who come and fall into this deception everything is about prosperity and prosperity and money and making it and doing all of this and they forget about strengthening believers to be strong no knowledge of the truth no evangelism no nothing and people become carnally minded all they want is competition of clothes and cars and all of that that is another kind of error but when the spirit of truth comes, 
he will bring the whole truth and create a balanced structured growth another kind of lie that satan is so mighty you don't know what he can do be afraid and be watching always be in a position of warfare and by warfare they mean just be ready to fight that is not scriptural it may be sincere it may be well-meaning by well-meaning people but believe me from the authority of God's word that is not the position of the believer we have been given a position of victory 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 in Christ then the ones who say ignore everything don't worry about anything provided you are happy you are fine and the devil likes such sermons and he continues to use subtlety to wreak havoc over people satan will join the heads of a husband and wife and stand behind and watch them in ignorance blaming one another for food for car for house rent and it is none of those issues the adversary join the heads of people and go back and watch with joy now you are getting intelligence that everything that happens in your life among the many factors you put together to interpret the happenings in your life do not forget to tap into the wisdom of the spirit be able to discern his deception the way my husband has been behaving in the last two weeks something is wrong you don't just say i will show you that i'm a wife you think you just married a foolish person when you think like that he has also deceived you to join your head together indeed one person has to create the advantage in that equation and in that case let it be you and you go and begin to pray now i will teach you by next week when we are dealing with administering deliverance because most believers say pray but most believers don't know what they're saying this idea of praying does not just mean talk to god mm -mm. god is not the only person you talk to in prayer there are times you talk to the situation there are times you talk to the devil there are times that you talk to you engage and call into remembrance the integrity of God all of it is called prayer so don't say I prayed we need to vet what you did based on the situation you are trying to handle just because you were given injection does not mean you were given the right treatment we have to look at what was wrong with you and who gave you the injection and what you were given and we can say no you have typhoid this is not the treatment for typhoid are we together so just because you feel the pain of injection you can say I received the injection I should be well that's what is frustrating many believers because they will tell you apostle I have prayed you don't look nobody prays like me I agree let's hear what you have been saying let's understand to who you have been talking first let me know what you want to achieve you will find out that many believers have just been wasting their time when they say pray they just they just mean talk talk loud add it again to god round up you have prayed you will never get victory that way it takes intelligence to understand what to say there were times jesus spoke to the father father i thank thee because you hear me and he turned and said open the tomb lazarus come forth notice the protocol when he was about to break bread he gave thanks and said go and share it is that how you multiply he never said multiply this bread he just said give give thanks go and multiply it when he stood before demons he did not talk to the father he rebuked the spirits go when he sent the disciples he said in my name when you find the spirits use my office my name does not mean j-e-s-u-s -S. my name means the consciousness of my office i have given you a position use it when you see satan and they return back with shock and they said even do you know the most outstanding miracle every miracle jesus did had been done in the old testament the only miracle that had not been done in the new testament was a miracle of deliverance never had a man used authority and a name to remove any demon you don't find that in the old testament you find them playing strings and the demons living are we together now but you do not find anybody using a name to remove any demon it's not done any 
In fact, what they do is they will kill the person. They stone the person who is demonized. When he dies, they now frustrate the demon because like you have learned, it takes a long time for demons to find bodies. They don't just find any body. They can find any mind, but they don't just find any body. Bodies are scarce. Bodies are scarce. That's why a legion will live in one body because bodies are scarce. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.